Planck's constant. Max Planck determined that energy can be gained or lost only on whole number multiples of the quantity Hb. He proposed that energy is quantized. Quantization means that only certain energy levels are allowed. Kind of like when we did the demo with the glow-in-the-dark board, only certain wavelengths were given off. In the case of the glow-in-the-dark star, only the green light was given off. The equation is delta E equals H nu or delta E equals HC over wavelength. H is a new variable, that's Planck's constant, at 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. Joules is our unit for energy. Nu is still frequency, which is seconds negative 1 or hertz. And E is energy in the unit of joules. This equation shows the relationship between the change in energy level and the electromagnetic radiation that would be absorbed or emitted. When an electron goes from the first energy level to the third energy level, energy has to be absorbed and the electron is excited to an unstable energy level. It can't stay at that third energy level long it eventually comes back down, and as it comes back down, light's emitted when the electron falls back to ground state. That's what we saw in the glow-in-the-dark board. We excited the electrons in the board, and then they came back down, and as they came back down, they released green light. So we put violet light in. As it came back down, it released green light. If an electron falls from the fifth, to the first energy level, that's a lot of energy that would be given off, and so it may come off in the form of violet light. Or if it went from the fourth energy level to the second energy level, a little bit less energy would be given off, so we would see blue-green color. And finally, third to first would be a lot less, and so red light would come off. Remember that violet is the highest in energy, red is the lowest in energy of the visible light. Sometimes we see those color emissions. One way that we see them is fireworks. The electrons get excited and different elements give off different colors. When we look at the picture on the right, lithium gets excited. It can get excited when the firework is lit and all that energy from the fire is going to the lithium atom. When it comes back down, lithium always emits red light until it eventually reaches its lower energy state. So your red fireworks could be due to lithium, or green is going to be due to barium. The photoelectric effect is the phenomenon in which electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal when light strikes it. So if it's a low energy light, then when it hits it, nothing happens. Well, when it's a high frequency light, when energy hits it, electrons come off. We'll see this some more in our next unit when we talk about PES graphs. So the observations that were made were light with a frequency lower than the threshold frequency occurs. No electrons are emitted, regardless of the intensity of the light. When light with a frequency greater than the threshold frequency occurs, the number of electrons emitted increases with the intensity of the light. And the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons increases literally with the frequency of the light. So the higher the frequency, the more electrons come off. And finally, before we get to the problems, Planck and Einstein came up with energy is quantized and that light has a dual nature. Electromagnetic radiation can act as waves and it can also act as particles. 
When light acts as a particle, it's referred to as a photon. So let's calculate the energy of a photon of light whose frequency is 7.85 times 10 to the 15th hertz. The first thing we have to do is write out our givens. So we're looking for energy and we have frequency. We have two equations that have energy in it. But since we're given frequency, we do not want to use this equation. We would use the equation on the right if we had or were looking for wavelength. So we do not need to rearrange this equation because we're looking for energy. So now we just need to plug it in. And just like before, when we're plugging in frequency, we're going to use seconds on the bottom because hertz, again, will not cancel out with our other units. Now our seconds cancel out and we're left with joules, which is what we wanted. So we just need to plug that in the calculator, multiplying. And we want three significant figures. Remember your units. And that's our answer. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Restart when you have your answer. So those were our givens, and so this is the equation that we're going to have to use, which means we need our H and our C values. Again, just like last time, we do not need to rearrange this equation because we're looking for energy. And my wavelength goes on the bottom. I can plug it in over here or over there as long as it's on the bottom. Doesn't matter where you put it. I cancel my units. Don't forget to cancel your units. The whole reason of setting it up this way is so you can cancel your units and realize that nanometers and meters do not cancel. So we are not done with this problem. We need to convert our nanometers. Now canceling our units, we're left with joules, which is energy, so now we just need to plug it in. Make sure that you multiply and then divide. You should get, if you plug it in correctly, we want two significant figures because that ending zero did not count. And so you get 3.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Go ahead and pause the video and try this last one on your own. So those were your knowns, and so that's the equation that we'll need to use.
We need our H. In this case, we do need to rearrange because we're looking for frequency. And now we can just plug it in. Cancel our units and then plug it in. We want three significant figures, so make sure that you round it to 5.03. This five rounds that up, so pay attention. And then our units should be hertz or one over seconds. What do you do with a dead chemist? Bury him. <laughs>